In recent decades, Bratislava became kind of a meme, thanks to the 2004 American comedy movie Eurotrip, which portrays it as the ultimate Eastern European hellhole, despite the fact that it's not technically located there. Although that portrayal is quite funny, in reality the capital of Slovakia is pretty charming thanks to their stunning historical landmarks and rapidly developing infrastructure. And some of its oddities are even funnier than the movie, like the fact that they have a bridge named after Chuck Norris. So in this in this video I take you on a journey through the intricate history of Bratislava and I show you why I became a frequent visitor of this city. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Anna and I make videos about random topics related to Central and Eastern Europe because I feel like there's not enough content about it online. So if you're into that, smash that subscribe button. Today we're gonna go on a journey through the history of my favorite Central European city, Bratislava. Bratislava is the capital of Slovenia. I mean Slovakia, which is a completely different country that just happens to have a similar looking flag, name, language and history. I've been to this city several times before, both during the summer and winter, and the thing about Bratislava in winter is... In winter, it can get very depressing. Just kidding, it's actually pretty lovely during winter too, especially during December when everything is covered in snow and decorated with Christmas lights. But it's super cold, so you'll need to spark your kofola with some borovichka to stay warm. Most of the footage I'm using in this video was filmed during September of 2023, but I show some old photos from 2018 as well. Sadly, my camera eats up batteries like a hungry Slovak kid devours his babichka's halushki, so so I could not record a few places properly and I had to use my phone instead, which is why some clips look a bit sketchy. But without further ado, let's dissect this topic. Slovakia is a West Slavic country of 5.4 million people located in Central Europe as the awkward third wheel between the suspicious bromance of Hungary and Poland. And no, Slovakia is not an Eastern European country. Approximately half of the country is covered with forests and they have the highest number of castles per capita in the world, which is 100% my vibe as a Transylvanian. Slovak cultural practices are a mixture between the old Slavic pig customs and Roman Catholic holidays, and Slovaks are infamous for spanking women during Easter and throwing bucketfuls of water on them. Slovakia blessed us with everybody's favorite hard bass artist, DJ Blatman, who contrary to popular belief is not Russian, and my all-time favorite food, Halushki, also originates from Slovakia, as well as my two favorite drinks, Borovička and Tatratea. As you already know from my epic Central and Eastern Europe tier list video, to me Slovakia is a solid A tier country. According to Nambio, which is a crowdsourced database owned by a Serbian private company, they have a pretty decent quality of life and safety indices. Plus, out of all the European political leaders, their current president Zuzana Chaputova has the biggest pro-Putin political party with a long history of corruption scandals wins Slovakia's 2023 parliamentary election. Come on guys, supporting an Eastern European politician who dares to attack one of our own is cringe. Instead of fighting among ourselves, we should be uniting our powers and invade France. Slovakia's capital Bratislava is the only capital city in the world that borders two countries, which happen to be the historical menaces of Central Europe, Austria and Hungary. Throughout history, the city was mostly known as Pressburg in German, Presporok in Slovakian and Pozsony in Hungarian. The origin of the city's current name is still debated, but the most accepted version credits the name to the Slovak philosopher Pavo Jozef Šafarik, who mistranslated the name of the medieval settlement called Brezalašpruk, which literally means Braslav's castle. So let's take a look at the stunning historical buildings and statues of Bratislava and untangle the complicated history of this place. 
According to archaeologists, the territory of current-day Bratislava has been populated since prehistoric times, starting with the Late Iron Age. This area served an important purpose during the Celtic period due to the location of the current Castle Hill, which was used as a military strategic point. For four centuries, the border of the Roman Empire, the Limes Romanus, ran through the area. With the 8th century arrival of the Slavs in Central Europe and the union of West Slavic tribes under the rulership of King Samo, the territory became a part of Samo's empire and later a part of Great Moravia. And soon enough, the arrival of the Guyash gang changed the course of Bratislava's history. After the creation of the Hungarian state in the 11th century, the territory of current-day Slovakia became part of Upper Hungary, landing under the rulership of the Kurtish enthusiasts. This era kicked off the refurbishment of the region with the construction of many outstanding castles and cathedrals. The most important example of that is the Bratislava Castle. The oldest historical record mentioning this place is the Annals of Salzburg of 907, reporting on the battle between Bavarians and Hungarians. Originally at the location of the current day castle, there was a wooden fortress erected by the Slavs during the Great Moravian Empire. After the area was swallowed by the growing Hungarian state, a stone palace and a church were built in the 11th century, which was rebuilt in Gothic style during the reign of Sigismund of Luxembourg. The castle includes four towers, one on each corner, out of which the tallest one is on the southwest side, which is 47 meters tall, erected in the 13th century. Today, the castle is used for the exhibition of the Slovak National Museum at the treasure chamber containing the most precious archaeological findings of Slovakia and a few rooms of the National Council of the Slovak Republic. The castle has four gates. In the inner courtyard there is an 80 meter deep well. There are also several bastions and in the surrounding area you can find some remains of the early medieval walls. My favorite part is the French Baroque garden which is a perfect spot for a sunset date and it reminded me of that quest from The Witcher when you go to that party with trees. The view from the hills is absolutely stunning with a great view of the Danube and you can see parts of Hungary and Austria from here. Also, during my previous visit, there was a Christmas fair at the castle when I snapped this photo which always makes me giggle. Spare me your juvenile wit, please. The medieval city fortifications of Bratislava were constructed in the 13th century, but only one of its gates and two sections of the walls exist today. Most of it was demolished in the 18th century under the order of Empress Maria Theresa of Austria, and the rest was torn down in the 19th century. One of the few remaining segments is located close to the castle near the St. Martin's Cathedral and it was made accessible to the public in 2020. During the Middle Ages, the city walls had four entrances, but only the Northern Michael's Gate has been preserved, which was completed in the 14th century. The Tower Gate was named after the old Gothic Church of St. Michael, which was located near by, but got destroyed by Ottoman invaders. The gate was extended several times until it got its final appearance in the 18th century, shortly before the city's fortifications were demolished. The view from the tower's balcony is absolutely stunning and on the inside there's an amazing arms museum. Under the gate you can find a giant compass, which points out the direction and distance to several important capital cities. The construction of the Roland Fountain, also known as as Maximilian Fontaine was ordered in 1572 by Maximilian II, the king of royal Hungary. Although the appearance of the Fontaine was changed throughout history several times, to the point that it doesn't even resemble the original form, it remains a popular landmark with several legends centered around it. Today it is taught by a statue of Maximilian portrayed as a knight in shining armor. The St. Martin's Roman Catholic Cathedral was built in the 15th century on the site of an old Romanesque church. Its tower used to be part of the medieval city's fortifications, having a height of 85 meters.
meters with a replica of the Hungarian crown on the top. And on the inside, you can find a stunning equestrian statue group of Saint Martin protecting a beggar from cold with his cloak. Throughout history, the church was used for several coronation events. The start of the Turkish invasions changed the course of the city's history since Hungary lost control over the area and the city fell under Habsburg rule. As a consequence of Ottoman advances through Hungarian territory, the Kingdom of Hungary became part of the Qin dynasty. Uh, no, not the Qin dynasty, I mean the Habsburgs. Despite this being a rough time, thanks to the squabbles with the Turks, the floods, the plagues and the handful of anti-Habsburg uprisings, the city was extended with several beautiful buildings, especially during Maria Theresa's 40-year region when the entire empire went through an era of economic growth. A great example of that is the old town hall, which was started during the 14th century, but it was only finalized in 1599 in Gothic style. The initial construction began by connecting three townhouses and it went through a renaissance reconstruction after it was destroyed by an earthquake. Then it was rebuilt in Baroque style after an 18th century city fire. Currently the building house is the Bratislava City Museum, which represents the city's history and exhibits torture devices that are almost as gruesome as trying to understand the difference between E, E, E and E. The Church of St. Stephen's of Hungary Capuchin Church and Monastery is a stunning Roman Catholic church built by the Capuchin monks who settled in the city at the end of the 17th century. The church was originally built in 1708 with the financial contributions of Eleanor Magdalene of Neuburg and it was renovated in the 19th century in neo-romanesque and neo-gothic styles. The stunning Baroque monument known as Mary's Column was set up in the 18th century, possibly to commemorate the help provided by the Capuchin monks during the plague. The statue portrays Mary with the baby Jesus and it stands in front of St. Stephen's Church. There are several Marian columns from the same era in the city, for example, there's another one near the town hall too. In the mid 18th century, a stunning church and monastery were erected in the old town, in late Baroque style, financed by the Archbishop of Estergon, which was dedicated to Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. The stunning Grasakovich Palace was built in the 18th century in late Baroque style, and it went through a full-scale reconstruction a century later. The palace was built by one of the most important figures of Hungarian politics at that time, Count Anton Grasakovich, who was actually Croatian. He often organized parties there, frequented by members of the imperial court, which was even attended by Maria Theresa herself. During the First World War, the palace served as military headquarters. During World War II, it was transformed into a residence of the president of the Slovak state, and during socialism, the building was used by a pioneer youth organization. Since Slovakia became an independent state, it was turned into a place for official welcoming ceremonies and signing important treaties as well as the residence of Slovakia's presidents, hence its current name. The building is surrounded by a courtyard and beautiful fences with two stunning gates. And if I learned anything from Dark Souls 3, there's probably a minibus behind that gate. The Reduta building is one of the prettiest buildings I've seen this year, since it's almost as beautiful as the average Slovak man. It was originally constructed in 1773 in Baroque style under the order of Maria Teresa, and it was enhanced in the early 20th century with neo-Baroque, Rococo and Art Nouveau elements. Bratislava's high society often held fancy dress balls or representative black tie events there, which became even more extravagant during carnival time. It also housed one of the first cinemas of the region. Today it's used as the concert hall of the Slovak Philharmonic, offering concerts to the wide public from local and international performers. The Primates Palace is considered as one of the most beautiful classicist buildings in Slovakia. The most iconic parts of the building are the allegorical statues standing on the roofline, representing Cardinal Josef Botanin's human qualities and achievement. The coat of arms in the middle kind of looks like Lady Dimitrescu, 
with an iron model of the cardinal's head weighing 150 kilograms. There are also some stunning illustrations carved into the tympanum, and the building houses an exhibition of portraits of Hungarian rulers and a real collection of English tapestries from the 17th century. Today the building serves as the seat of Bratislava's mayor, the Slovak politician, architect and urban activist Matu Švalo, who also happens to be the bass player of the Slovak band Para. <laughs> The Fountain of St. George and the Dragon is a stunning Renaissance fountain standing in the courtyard of the Primate's Palace. According to the legend, George was an officer in the Roman army who came upon a town terrorized by a dragon where people used to decide with a coin toss whom to sacrifice to the dragon in order to protect the rest of the inhabitants. When the king's daughter had lost the toss, George intervened and unalived the dragon with a spear, which is kind of a dick move like, seriously, are you only gonna do something when a pretty girl is involved. Sam! The story, of course, is just a tall tale symbolizing the conquest of Christianity over the heathens, and it's kind of a knockoff of the ancient Thracian horseman symbol. This statue is one of the most beautiful depictions of the legend I've seen so far, but I could not, for the love of God, find out who made it. The Fountain of the Franciscan Nymph is also known as a woman with jar, which kind of sounds like the title of a video you'd find at a random corner of the internet in 2008 that would traumatize you for life. This stunning little fountain portrays a woman in ancient dress with a helmet pouring water from a pitcher. The pedestal is decorated with the coat of arms of Bratislava and some Latin text. As you might already know from my previous Central European travel vlog and history videos, this era wasn't the most peaceful one, especially due to the ethnic conflicts and political oppression, which triggered events such as the 1848-49 Slovak uprising, which aimed for equalizing Slovaks, democratizing political life and achieving social justice. And not much later, the dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary was established, which came with its own set of negatives and positives. The Austro-Hungarian Empire Now, whether you love it or hate it, we cannot deny the massive architectural influence of the era. Covering the entire region with Hungarian and Viennese secessionist constructions, which are still considered as some of the most iconic buildings of Central Europe. And we reach the part of my video where I must sim for my favorite architect duo who designed the opera houses of Zagreb, Rijeka, Krujnapoka, Vienna, Graz and many more. The Bratislava Opera House, known today as the historical building of the Slovak National Theatre, is a neo-renaissance style building designed by the two Austrian architects Ferdinand Fellner and Hermann Helmer. The facade is decorated with the busts of famous musical composers, a stunning sculpture of the Muse of Talia and figures of children symbolizing tragedy and comedy. The opera played on the opening night was the Hungarian Bang Ban. Which is a show that I actually recently watched and I gotta say, it is super dark and it has a way more interesting plot than the Netflix adaptation of The Witcher. The sculpture standing in front of the theater is known as Ganymedus's Fountain, which was created in 1888 by the Bratislava-born sculptor V. Tegner. The statue depicts Ganymedes, a divine hero from ancient Greek mythology, described by Homer as the most beautiful of mortals, who was abducted by the gods to serve as Zeus cupbearer. This composition captures the scene of an eagle carrying Ganymedes with two basins. The top basin is surrounded by sculptures of aquatic creatures, while the lower one has four figures of children holding different types of fish that exist in the Danube River. The statues of Saints Michael and John of Nepomuk are an 1898 edition standing near the Saint Michael's Gate. The statue of Saint Michael carries a shield with the coat of arms of Bratislava on it. John of Nepomuk was the confessor of the Queen of Bohemia, who was executed by drowning for refusing to divulge the secrets of the confessional. Near the Danube river front, you can stumble upon the Esterhazy Palace, which was built in neo renaissance style in the same era. Today, it hosts the Slovak National Gallery exhibitions. The Church of St. Elizabeth, commonly referred to as the Blue Church, for obvious reasons, is a Roman Catholic church built in Hungarian secessionist style. This was designed by Uden 
Lehner, who coincidentally also designed a hospital building where I spent some not so great days during my childhood. The church has a stunning blue facade with mosaics, maiolicas, and a blue glazed roof decorates the almost 40 meter tall tower. The building is consecrated to Elizabeth of Hungary, who grew up in the Bratislava castle, which is why on the altar there is an illustration of her giving alms to the poor. This church is such an iconic part of the capital that there is a model of it in the mini Euro park of Brussels representing Slovakia. One of the most stunning buildings in the main square is the Palace of the Hungarian Exchange Bank. This building was constructed in 1911 based on the designs of two Hungarian architects and one of them happens to be the designer of the Deceba Bridge in Timisoara. Honestly, I'm always really excited to find ties to my homeland when I make these videos. The first covered market of the region was designed by František Nehiba, erected in 1910 and it's known today as the Old Market Hall. The building was constructed on the site of a 15th century bastion, which used to be part of the city's medieval fortifications. Today, the building is still used as a market, where you can find products from local farmers, as well as high-quality foreign delicacies. After the First World War, Slovakia gained independence from Austria-Hungary, and a new state was established, which left a different influence on the face of the city. In 1918, the current day regions of Slovakia and Czechia declared independence from Austria-Hungary, forming the state of Czechoslovakia. Two decades later, part of the lands merged into Nazi Germany, while other territories were lost to Hungary and Poland, and the state temporarily ceased to exist between 39 and 45. After World War II, Czechoslovakia was re-established under the forced rulership of the Communist Party, becoming part of the Eastern Bloc. There was an attempted political liberation in 1968, which was violently ended by the Soviet Union, and that event is very well illustrated in my favorite movie, Cozy Dance. Similarly to other countries in the region, in 1989, the communist government was terminated during the violent revolution, which eventually led to the peaceful split of the Czech Republic and Slovakia. In the early days of Czechoslovakia, back in 1930, the current headquarters of the Slovak National Museum was opened, which shares this beautiful building on the side of the Danube with the Natural History Museum. The building was designed by M. M. Harunietz, who designed several churches, banks and hospital buildings in the area. The museum has a stunning neoclassical style with a facade made of perfectly symmetrical columns and a tympanum. The lion with coat of arms fountain was set up in front of the old market hall in 1937. The lion leaning against the coat of arms of Bratislava is a copy of a 16th century statue which is currently deposited in the Bratislava City Museum. The lower basin is a 20th century addition. The sculpture in memory of Bulgarian citizens was erected in 1949 to commemorate the heroism of Bulgarian partisans who lost their lives in the liberation of Slovakia during World War II. And the text below it says, he who falls in the fight for freedom does not die. On a hill across the Bratislava castle, you can see a gigantic war memorial known as Slavin, which is visible from all around the city. This commemorates the city's liberation by the Red Army in April 1945, and it is surrounded by a cemetery of thousands of Soviet soldiers who lost their lives during World War II fighting for the surrounding area. The central obelisk is around 40 meters high, illustrating a Soviet soldier who carries a flag. This was created by the iconic Slovak sculptor Alexander Trizuliak. The citizens of Bratislava have mixed feelings about this statue since it was created before the 1968 invasion when the relationship between Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union was still peaceful, but the invasion soured that relationship. This time around when I visited the city, I did not have the energy to climb the hill because I'm getting old and I already walked 15 kilometers on that day, so no proper footage from me here. But last time when I visited, the whole area was covered in snow and there were some weird Hungarian teenagers building snowmen on the graves. Talking about things that I was too tired to climb, how's your mom? I mean, let's talk about the UFO tower. The bridge tower was erected on the Slovak National Uprising Bridge, which connects the two sides of the Danube. The bridge itself was put into operation in 1972. It has two levels and together with the tower, it weighs around 8,000 tons. In 2001, the bridge was declared the building of the century and it became popular worldwide due to its unique alien craft shape. The view from its sightseeing deck is 
mind-blowing, showing a range up to 100 kilometers, including parts of Austria and Hungary. The monument of Ludovic Tour commemorates the Slovak National Revivalist, which was created by Tibor Barpai, who was responsible for the creation of several other statues all over Bratislava. The Memorial of Slovak National Uprising is the most stereotypical Kamiara statue erected in 1974. The composition portrays a Slovak partisan with two women commemorating the 1944 uprising, which was the main anti-fascist action in Slovakia during World War II. There's also the Victory Monument to Liberation by the Red Army, commemorating the liberation of Bratislava by the Red Army, specifically by the forces of the Second Ukrainian Front in the Bratislava Brno Offensive. The statue portrays the Roman goddess of victory, Victoria, holding an olive branch. The Planet of Peace, Fantin, is one of the last memorials of the Czechoslovak era which stands in front of the presidential palace. This was set up in the 1980s and it centers around a huge globe which became a popular meeting point in the city. As I mentioned earlier, on the 31st of December 1992, Czechoslovakia peacefully split into two sovereign states and people often compare the relationship between Slovakia and Czechia to a pair of divorced parents who occasionally hook up in secret. And I honestly wish that my last breakup was as mature and peaceful as these guys instead of being like the breakup of Yugoslavia. The end of the communist rule in Czechoslovakia led to the country's dissolution into two separate states. Since then, in 2004, Slovakia has joined the European Union and eventually switched to using the euro as their currency. In 2007, they signed the Lisbon Treaty, which expresses the fundamental principles of democratic equality. And in the same year, they joined the Schengen area, allowing visa-free travels. Both Slovakia and Czechia are part of the Visegrad group, together with Hungary and Poland, which led to the creation of the world's second most insane subreddit known as To Visegrad For You, which is similar to the former To Balkan For You. After the massive political changes, the city's leadership tried to revive the city with major cleanups, reparations, and the creation of four iconic statues, which became some of the most popular tourist attractions over time. The sculpture of Trumil the Peeper portrays a worker peeping out of a manhole, possibly peeking under women's skirts. The statue was created by Viktor Hulik in 1997 and there are several theories behind its meaning. Some people say it's a parody of the average Komiara worker who works little and watches a lot. Or he is just chilling after a hard day of cleaning the sewers, which might symbolize the hard work of cleaning up the city after the Velvet divorce. Legend says that if you touch his head and make a wish that you can keep a secret forever, it will come true. And believe it or not, the statue was accidentally decapitated twice, thanks to the reckless drivers, which is why today there is a road sign next to it. The statue of Napoleon's army soldier was created by the iconic Slovak sculptor Juraj Melish. This commemorates the two occasions when Napoleon's army entered the city in December of 1805 and thousands of soldiers marched through the streets. One of the soldiers fell in love with a local so he decided to stay in Bratislava and began making sparkling wine. The cast iron statue of Ignaz Lamar, nicknamed as Schöner Nazi, portrays a local man who became famous for walking through the streets in an elegant suit and a top hat back in the days when men knew how to be traditional men and didn't waste their entire life complaining on Twitter and making TikToks like 14-year-old girls. He often serenaded random passers-by women in three different languages and gave them flowers. His real-life story is rather depressing given that he was extremely poor but his positive attitude gained the other of the locals, due to which he often received fruit from restaurants and coffee shops. His statue was also made by Uri Melish to commemorate all the smiles he left on the locals' faces. The first statue is Radko Machuha's paparazzi, which is a statue of a photographer peeping with his camera around the corner, seemingly taking photos of Bratislava celebrities living the nearby bars. The Apollo Bridge was constructed in 2005, named after the former Apollo oil refinery, which was situated on the left river bank in the area before World War II. Thanks to its sophisticated design, the bridge became one of the five finalists for the 2006 Outstanding Civil Engineering Achievements Award by the American Society of Civil Engineers. 
The statue of Svato Pluk I was erected in 2010 in the memory of Great Moravia's ruler, often labeled as the Slovak King, who became a symbol of the Slovak national awakening. The statue caused a lot of controversy as many Slovaks claim that Svato Pluk wasn't technically a Slovak and the statue is a falsification of history created as nationalist propaganda. I'm not gonna comment on that because last time when I mentioned a similar controversy from a different country, a lot of my viewers got triggered so yeah i encourage my slovak viewers to share their opinions about this in the comment section the cutest statue of the city is the first post box which portrays two skater girls resting beside a post box this was created to celebrate the history of slovakia's postal service and it is not just for show apparently the mailbox is actually functional According to a 2012 survey, the citizens of Bratislava wanted to name the new bicycle bridge which connects Bratislava with Austria after their favorite TV hero Chuck Norris. Sadly, the officials did not appreciate the joke and decided to change it to the Bridge of Freedom, but in my mind this will forever be the Chuck Norris bridge. Usually when I make these videos, there is not much to show after the early 2000s since in recent decades people mostly build residential buildings and sold as corporate offices. In the case of Bratislava, however, I need to give out some praise for the newly renovated Bratislava main bus station opened in 2021. If you're an avid traveler like myself, you probably noticed that in most European cities the bus station is the trashiest part of the area, even in some of the most beautiful capitals. Capitals. I'm looking at you, Vienna. The new Bratislava bus station is an airport type terminal featuring a shopping mall and a green roof with gardens, running tracks, and different sports equipment. The station has 36 platforms, both for international lines and intercity connections. It also has a massive underground parking lot and it's easily accessible both by cyclists and pedestrians, too. It's safe, it's clean, and it has everything a traveler might need, so good job, Slovakia. In short, I'm thoroughly impressed by the quick development of the city and I really hope that the new change in political climate won't fuck this whole thing up. Thanks to the 2004 American movie Eurotrip, many foreigners still firmly believe that Bratislava is a shithole. Ironically, Bratislava is safer and better maintained than most of the other cities featured in the movie. I'm impressed by its constant development, the easy and modern public transportation, the large number of green areas and the overall vibe of the city. One might argue that I've only shown the central area, but I've seen a handful of residential areas as well and honestly, they aren't bad at all. Bratislava will forever have a special place in my heart and I'm sure I'll return for a glass of Borovička and some good old Halushki a few more times in the future. But enough about my opinions. Have you been to this city or are you planning on visiting it? Tell me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more content about Central and Eastern Europe, check out my other documentaries and my shorts. And subscribe or the copyright hour will grate you. Thanks for tuning in and have a nice day.